In this presentation, we will take a look at examples related to recording encumbrances and expenditures, and then we'll put together a subsidiary ledger from the trial balance that we have constructed through the example problem. The first transaction will be the recording of the budget. This is going to be our information on the left. We're going to post that to a trial balance. The trial balance has been broken out to so give us some context of the order of the accounts and how they will be adjusted. Green accounts being the asset accounts, orange accounts being the liability accounts, the light blue accounts being what would be the equity accounts or the asset minus liability accounts. The dark blue accounts is what we would think of in a normal accounting for a for-profit organization as the income statement type accounts, those temporary accounts, the accounts that we would expect to be closed out to some type of what would be the equity type of accounts. Here, this is where we're going to spend a lot of our time. It's a little bit more complicated here for a few different reasons. One is that we're going to use a modified accrual method rather than an accrual method, and therefore we see accounts such as expenditures. Also, we're going to post the budget and therefore we're going to have budgetary accounts that we're going to have to deal with as well. So the budgetary accounts is where we're first going to start and the budgetary information is going to be on the left. We want to identify which accounts are going to be the budgetary accounts, which are kind of like the normal accounts on the income statement and the equity section here. So first we have revenue. That's pretty straightforward. Revenue is revenue. We've seen that before. It goes up with a credit balance. There's going to be a related budgetary account, the related budgetary accounts will typically have opposite balances as their their component part uh, account. So the revenue has a credit balance. In other words, estimated revenues has a debit balance. So we got the estimated revenues will have a debit balance. Then we have expenses rather than expenditures because we're on a modified accrual basis as opposed to an accrual basis. And then the budgetary account related to it, I would tie out the appropriations you can kind of think of the encumbrances as well as a type of budgetary accounts related similar to expenses. However, I would think of the encumbrances separately, differently, more as a clearing account. We'll discuss the encumbrances as we work through this problem as well. The expenditures have a debit balance like normal expenses would, and therefore the related appropriations account will have a credit balance. So as we post this then, we will post this budgetary information. Now note the budgetary information is going to have detail. We have the detail of the revenues by property taxes, license and permits, fines and forfeitures, and intergovernmental. These are going to be the categories of revenue. We're not going to post the categories of revenue. At the end of this problem, we'll actually have a subsidiary ledger, which will break out the detail much to my, like you might be used to with something like an accounts receivable account, which has a subsidiary ledger breaking the information out by who owes the company money in other words, customers, we're going to do that same thing here. We're going to muddy the waters by posting the journal entry, something unusual, but, and then, but we're only going to post one line item, not all the detail. And then we're going to have the subsidiary ledgers that will break out that detail uh, in a separate section. So the same is going to be true with the appropriations. So, so we're going to take this total account then, post it to budgeted or estimated revenue. And the same is true for the expenditures or appropriations. The appropriations are broken out by these categories, general government, public safety, public works, culture and recreation, miscellaneous. We're, we're going to post them as one line item and then take a look at the detail of them with subsidiary ledgers. Therefore, the journal entry is going to look like this. Estimated revenue, you'll recall, has a debit balance because it's going to be the opposite of the normal credit balance revenue account. And therefore, we debit it by the, the total item here. And then the appropriations is kind of like the budgetary expenditure type of account has a credit balance because expenditures like expenses have debit balances and therefore we credit it to make it go up. And the difference then, where's the difference going to go? Well, we kind of made up some new accounts. We're posting the budget. That's a little bit unusual. We usually put the difference too when we do something funny. We stuff it into the equity section. So that's what we're doing here or the equity like section, the assets minus liability uh, type section. So we're going to make up this account called budgetary fund balance. That's where the difference is going to go. If we were to see this posted, then we're going to say that the estimated revenues are going to go up in the debit direction, the appropriations going up in the credit direction, and the difference going to the budgetary fund balance here in what would be the equity section assets minus liabilities. Now, when we think of the balance sheet or the income statement accounts, the dark blue type of accounts or the accounts that are temporary or where they would be positioned as normal income statement type of accounts if it was a for-profit organization is a little bit muddy because we can't just add up revenue minus expenses to get to what would be net income. We got to group these accounts by these being basically the budgetary accounts 
and then consider that and compare and contrast it to those kind of temporary accounts, those that will close out at the end of the time period to some type of what would be equity accounts for a for-profit, uh, and that would be revenue and expenditures. Next item, we're going to say that we have revenue came in. Revenue came in, we're going to say this cash actually revenue, and we're going to charge for the revenue. This is similar to a for-profit that would actually basically send out an invoice. This is going to be uh, familiar or look the same as kind of like if we sent out an invoice for a for-profit. We're going to say that cash is going to be increasing, revenue is going to be increasing. That's a fairly straightforward, looks like kind of what we would expect if we received revenue for the revenue type of activities happening here. And that, in this case, of course, taxes and fines and forfeitures. So we're going to say that cash is going to increase with a debit and the other side is going to go to revenue. So revenue goes up with a credit. So now when we look at these income statement accounts, we're back in balance here. But when we look at these income statement accounts, we can't just say debits minus the credits, revenue minus expenses. We kind of got to group them together. So now we've got, we've got the estimated accounts down here and now we've got the actual accounts. So we have actual have revenue of this amount and the estimated accounts are going to be uh, the estimated revenue minus the appropriations at this point. Next item, we have orders estimated costs. So this is going to be the point that's going to be unusual. It's going to be different for the modified accrual basis than it would be for standard accounting. And this is going to be that item. You can compare it to us having a purchase order for a for-profit type of organization. If there's a purchase order, that's that form where we would send it out for a for-profit organization. And we're basically saying, hey, vendor, we would like inventory. We would like supplies. We would like something to be shipped to us, but we're not going to pay for it yet. And we haven't received it yet. Therefore, it's just a document. It's not a financial transaction. It doesn't trigger either an asset on the books because we haven't got it yet or a, a liability because we haven't got it. So we, we're not put, putting a payable on the books. We've just requested it and we haven't yet paid for it. So there's no financial transaction under an accrual basis method but we still would track the fact that we sent out a purchase order and would expect to see to receive something at some future point in time in the case for governmental accounting uh, although even the modified accrual we're not going to record the expenditure at the point in time that we have an estimate or a purchase order because again there's no financial transaction we haven't received it what we will want to do however is say hey these appropriations we've assigned them somewhere by committing to a purchase order or some type of estimate Therefore, we want to put it into something kind of like an expense account, but we can't put it into an expense yet because we, the, the rules don't let us and under the modified accrual with no financial transaction has happened. Therefore, we're going to put it into encumbrances. Encumbrances then is showing that the appropriations have now been committed, further committed with a purchase order. And so we're going to debit encumbrances, but we can't credit cash and we can't credit a payable. Because again, we haven't we haven't received anything. It wouldn't be right to do that yet. Therefore, the other side has to go somewhere. Where are we going to put it when we don't know where to put something? Where do we put it? We put it usually in some type of equity type equivalent type of account, asset minus liability account somewhere in this blue area. And that's where we put it. So we're going to say we're going to debit encumbrances, credit encumbrances outstanding. So it's going to look like this. Encumbrances increasing. The other side in encumbrances outstanding looks kind of like an expense going up in the debit direction. However, uh, we're, when the expense is actually able to be recognized under the modified accrual rules, then we're going to basically move this up to the expense. And now we're not just going to do that by one journal entry to move it up there. We're going to reverse this journal entry because we will then have to get rid of this account. These will always be equal and opposite because it's just a holding account. I would think about the encumbrances as a holding account uh, type of account because it's a, rather than a normal temporary type of account that's going to close out to equity. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go from zero up and then back down based on some kind of rule that's going to be pretty much distinct to it. And that's going to be that once it's going to go up when the estimate happens or the purchase order, it's going to go down when the expense related to those encumbrances has then been incurred. So next, we're going to say that we actually received some of the goods that are going to be encumbered. So these goods, these 35,900 that we, that we put in here as encumbrances, we received some of them. We're going to need to know two things when that happens. One, we're, we're going to know what the actual cost is, which is going to be different than possibly the amount we put it on the books for because that was just an estimate. And we need to know the amount of supplies we got and the related estimated amount because we may not have received all of this 35,900 uh, estimated amount yet. So we're going to have to know of that 35,900, how much of the supplies have we received in the estimated amount? 
and then we need to know what the actual invoice is going to be and obviously in real life we would get the, the the supplies and we'd be able to basically count the supplies or and see what compared the purchase order the estimates that we had compared to what we received and what have we got and what have we not received at that point in time then to to record this now we've got the the either inventory or the items at this point we're going to say that we're going to record it as a, an expense now because we've received it and therefore we're going to we're going to be able to record the expense at this point in time so now we're going to say the expenditure the expense related item is now able to be recorded but before we do that we need to reverse what we did before because this account needs to go away and we basically need to record the actual amount in the uh, expenditures now so we're going to reverse the encumbrances now we're going to reverse them for the estimated amount that we have received we haven't received all of them yet and then we're going to reverse the, the journal entry entirely so basically last time we put the the uh, encumbrances on the books it has a debit balance we're going to credit it to make it go down and now we still have 1,800 left that we haven't received related to the encumbrances. And then we have the encumbrances outstanding. It's going to be reversed as well. Once again, these two totals will always be equal and opposite, representing you know the, the estimates that have been out there that we have not yet been received. Now we can record the other side of it, which is going to be related to the recording of the expenditure. And this will look more like the normal type of journal entry that we will have. And we'll record this at the actual amount. This is the actual amount that we would receive in terms of the bill. We're going to say that we're going to pay for it at this point in time as well. So we're going to say that we have the expense, which is kind of like, or the expenditure, which is like the expense related account. And then we're going to credit the cash. This should look like kind of a normal type of journal entry. The only thing that's unusual here is, well, there's a couple things. One, it's an expenditure as opposed to an expense. And two, we had to reverse the encumbrance before we can uh, have this item. So we're going to credit the cash. Cash then going down with the credit. The other side going to the expenditures, increasing the expenditures. And now as we look at these dark blue accounts, these what would be similar to the income statement accounts or the temporary accounts, we need to once again think about the grouping of these accounts. You know, we have the budgetary accounts, which are, are in this case looking at the estimated revenues and uh, appropriations and then we've got the expend the revenue minus expenditures accounts and that's going to be the revenue minus the expenditures and then we have this encumbrances which is kind of like a like a budgetary account but it's a little bit different in terms of of a, of a holding down account it's been applied out but not yet incurred next thing we want to do is take a look at the subsidiary ledger so now we've got this trial balance we have our trial balance over here and we said that some of these items we broke out but we didn't give a whole lot of detail for example we have the uh, estimated revenues here and we said we're going to actually post that but we're not going to put all the detail that would get muddy we'd have a lot of accounts on even more messy than it already is we'd have a lot of accounts on the trial balance so therefore we'll put one line item and then we'll have the subsidiary ledger over here giving us the detail so here's the detail here's the detail we had in our problem we're breaking that out in our subsidiary ledger and then we're going to show the detail of it now note this subsidiary ledger is a little bit confusing because we have two things involved here one the estimated account and its related normal account so we have estimated revenues and revenues both being tracked by the subsidiary ledger so estimated revenues we can see that they're being increased by these categories in accordance with our information we had to add that up if we add up that full category this number then lines up to what is on our trial balance as it should given it's a subsidiary ledger and then the revenue accounts we had increased recall that we only had the two items for revenue so far so we haven't finished the period here we've got license and permits we have fines and forfeits those add up to the sixty thousand and four hundred. so that's going to be this item here and then we have the balance comparing the, the estimated revenue and the revenues received thus far. Then we can do the same thing for the appropriations, encumbrances, and expenditures. So you'll recall once again that we have the other side is going to be on the appropriations, on the budgetary. And then we have the related account expenditures and also this funny account encumbrances, which is like a holding account. We're going to do the same thing, have a subsidiary ledger related to these three accounts this is going to be kind of confusing because now we have a subsidiary ledger related to these three items we're really kind of trying to see of these appropriations 
how much of them have been either expended or encumbered at this point in time. So that's going to be a credit of the appropriations, the estimate, and encumbered and expended. It's going to look like this. We'll see another example with this expanded, but I want to be able to see all the data on one sheet here. So we have appropriations, encumbrances, and expenditures. Here's the encumbrances. Here's the expenditures. Here's the appropriations. If we think about this in order, first thing that happens is we put the appropriations on the books and the appropriations it's going up i'm going to say in the credit direction so it increases there's the balance next thing that happened is we had orders and estimates which means that the appropriations went up so the appropriations in this case just for the general government went up by 8400 that's the next thing that happened the total then so what the the balance is that's remaining the appropriations over what's been encumbered or expensed is the 540 minus that 8,400. And then what happened is that we received the items. Uh, and when we received the items, we reversed the encumbrance, bringing it back down to zero. And, and that's for the estimated amount. That's going to be this amount. And then we recorded the expenditure at actual. So then if we, if we think about the balance, the, we have the prior balance of the encumbrances that have and then we and then we add that back for encumbrances and then we subtract out the actual amount related to the expenses to get down to the appropriations that have are not at this point either encumbered or uh, expenditures and so we would do that same process all the way through so we'd go so if we had public safety uh, public works culture and recreation and again the the idea is it's going like this we got the appropriation that's going to be our budgetary amount uh, it's on as a credit then we encumbered it by having an estimate so we committed so that's going to be the the 13.3 so this amount is going to go down by the 13.3 because it's been estimated and then we actually received what we ordered and at that point in time we need to reduce the encumbered amount not by the entire amount because we didn't receive all of it yet so we still have 1600 that we expect to receive that's still encumbered but not an expenditure and then we record the related expenditure. It's a different number. Why? Because this is the actual expenditure as opposed to the uh, estimated amount. And so the estimated amount might not be the same as the actual that we received. And then here we have that. So the balance then of what appropriations have not yet been uh, encumbered or expensed is going to be what it was before. We're adding back to it the encumbrances because now we reversed it. And then we're putting it on the real amount, decreasing for the actual expense amount. The same for the public works. We start with the encumbrance. Here's the encumbrance. Then we, I mean, I'm sorry, we start with the appropriation, the, the estimate. Then we have the encumbrance, and that's going to be the, the purchase order. This is going to be the estimate for the purchase order. And so, and then that's going to decrease the amount of the appropriations over the encumbrances and expenditures. And then, of course, we received the items, which means we reduced the encumbrances related to the amounts we've received. And that means we're left with, in this case, 200 that haven't been uh, received yet. And then the expenditures is on the books for the actual amount. So this amount is related to, to the items we've received, but this is at the actual amount. And so there's still 200 left that we're going to increase you know, the expenses by when we, re when we receive them, but it'll be for the actual amount too, because this 200 is still left as an estimate. And then, the, and so that's going to be the expenditure. So here's what, here's the amount we had before adding back to it, the encumbrances we reversed expenditures, then going back down, here's the balance. And then the last one we have, um, culture and recreations. The last one we'll look at d in detail appropriations going up. That's the estimate then we have the encumbrances that's going to be the estimate for the for the purchase orders and so that increases uh, the balance here and decreases the appropriations over encumbrances and expenditures then we got all of those right so those are gone we've already received them all so the encumbrance we've received them and therefore the encumbrance is gone and then we put it on the expenses on the books not for the same amount but for the actual amount because the invoice is going to represent the actual amount and then the balance then prior balance goes up by the encumbrance that we're reversing and then down by the actual expenditure representing the appropriation over the encumbrances and expenditures at that point in time and then we would do the same thing for miscellaneous and if we were to add all these up then all these columns then the encumbrance total column adds up to what's on the books the 1800 because it's a subsidiary ledger the expenditures total column is going to add up to what's on the books because it's a subsidiary ledger 
as well as the appropriations adding up to the appropriations on the books. The next thing we can do with these ledgers is put together our comparison of the budget versus the actual. So now that we have these, these uh, ledgers, we can put together our, our forms in terms of the budget versus the actual. So we can break out these totals, taxes, license and permits, fines and forfeitures, and intergovernmental, same categories here. We're picking up the budgeted uh, amounts. So these are gonna be the estimated budgeted amounts that we have here, adding up to the total. And then we have the actual amounts, the actual amounts only for license and fines and forfeitures of these two amounts. The difference between the two, showing the difference between the budget and the actual, and of course, those columns summed up. So this item lines up to this item. And then we do the same thing for appropriations, expenditures, and encumbrances. So if we were to take all the categories, this is only the end of the statement. If we take all the categories, we had governmental, general government, public safety, public works, culture and recreation, miscellaneous, appropriations going on the books for the original estimate. And so this would tie out to what's on the trial balance. Also ties out to appropriations here. And then we have the encumbrances. So the encumbrances are going to be these two items. Again, we're just pulling the information straight from the subsidiary ledger, the total, and that they only had the uh, two that still had encumbrances outstanding at the end of the day. That's tying out to this amount would tie out to the trial balance as well. And then we have the expenditures, the expenditures pulling from the subsidiary ledger by category, the total for those categories being the 34,200. And then we're thinking about the appropriations the budgetary amount over that's still left after encumbrances and expenditures. So the encumbrance is going up and then down when the, when the expenditure is in place. And so the things that have been encumbered or expended are represented, the appropriations, the budgetary amount minus those that have been either encumbered or expended is gonna be the final column uh, available appropriations. And there is our total. And of course the total here matches the total in our subsidiary ledger as well.